and a very warm welcome to Jump To It here on irishracing.com. We are looking ahead to Ladies' Day, day two of the 2022 Cheltenham Festival. Uh, lots to get stuck into in today's show, of course. I'm in the company of Vincent Vinnegan and Stephen Harris. Uh, great to see you, gentlemen. Now, just should put this out here. We are recording this uh, on Tuesday morning. Uh, so there are obviously a few unknowns uh, as to how things will play out ahead of, of this show. Uh, but Vincent, we'll come to you first. Uh, the way things stand, we have a whole plethora of uh, potentially short-priced favourites uh, going into Ladies' Day. Uh, we could see a few people uh, rolling these horses up into accumulators. Yeah, and you, you you wouldn't be totally against that idea. That's that's part of the fun of Cheltenham when everyone's on the same horses and cheering them home. We've got four particularly short ones. We've got Sir Gerhardt in the first. We've got Shishkin, Tiger Roll, and then we've got Vasil Vega in the bumper. And with Boyle Sports at the moment, that accumulator works out at 18 and a half to one. I'm sure a lot of people will do that. And then if you wanted to stick in one of the other English bankers possibly of the day is Brave Man's Game. It works out 63 to one, the accum. Be a nice return for lots of people if that comes up. Absolutely, that will get the, uh, the the punters in, in a frenzy. Uh, Stephen, uh, the, the ground is always a big talking point. Uh, Cheltenham has been uh, bathed in sunshine for the last two or three days. Ground had dried up to good to soft. Uh, rain coming in throughout the Wednesday uh, is forecast. Uh, varying amounts between two millimetres and eight millimetres, depending on which of the 63 different weather websites you want to check up yeah. upon. Uh, a bit of a, a kind of a last minute conundrum for punters, I suppose. Well, it really is, Ed. We were talking about this off air, weren't we? And of course, horses like Tiger Roll, I don't think he wants deep ground if it really poured with rain all afternoon. And Sir Gerhard would have a big stamina question mark. But I mean, this is a big day for bookmakers. Um, there's lots of short priced horses. As uh, Vincent said, they're all going to be rolled up into multiples. I remember uh, Annie Power a few years ago. That, that would have cost the industry. I mean, I think that caused shockwaves. The fact they got it beat was <laughs> absolute. It's it would have wiped firms out. They're not talking about Labrooks and Hills, the big companies, but some of these smaller firms who just started on the internet could not afford to pay. That their systems didn't deal with the the rolling up money that kept emerging. Of course, Annie Power would have won by jumping that shadow. So um, there'll be a few bookmakers with the gloves up. I think they're going to have some enormous liabilities if Sir Gerhard wins the first. Yeah, I can remember the uh, the eerie atmosphere after uh, Ruby Walsh and Annie Power on the deck at the final flight. Well, you, you mentioned Sir Gerhard. Uh, that is uh, pretty much a good place to kick things off, of course, in the opener uh, at one thirty, The Ballymore Novices Hurdle, grade one action here over the two and a half miles. Uh, Sir Gerhard, uh, your odds on favourite. Now, a lot of support for him in recent days since it was made clear he would not be running in the Supreme and going for this contest. Stephen, you could continue the thread. Uh, are you with or against the, uh, the odds on Jolly here? Well, I think at the prices, you've got to be against him. I think he's, he's priced up uh, on the reputation of his bumper win here rather than the, the hurdling form so far. I mean, the race he won last time in Ireland, it was one of those races, it, it, although it was a big race, a graded race, um, the market was just completely one way. I think he was nearly uh, evens or odds against in the morning, just got hammered all the way down straight through. And of course, they gifted him an easy lead and he won impressively. Now, watching it back, he, he was losing half a length for every jump, virtually. I wasn't impressed at all with his jumping. And that was gifted a solo on the lead. So at Cheltenham, in a more competitive race with a front runner or two in there, he's going to have to do something differently. And also the trip. Now, everyone says he's won his point to point, but he's not guaranteed to stay. It is five furlongs further in a properly run race with jumping being a worry. I mean, I couldn't dream him at six to four. And I know he's got a huge reputation and, the Irish horses of different class and all the rest of it. But I personally think the value lies with the journey with me each way at around five or six to one. I think that is a cracking bet. He'll definitely stay. If it pours with rain, it's a massive plus for him, which we don't know at the moment if that happens. Um, there's not many realistic runners. I don't think horses like I am Maximus is good enough at all. And then after that, there's a lot of horses extremely hard to fancy. So three places, um, some firms will be a quarter of the odds, of course. It's a Absolutely. But he's one of those horses, Ed, that if you're getting six to four a place, so a quarter of the odds at six to one, say, for example, if you look on Betfair or the exchanges, you'll see he's about 1.6 to place. It's a colossal arb, an arb that you wouldn't be allowed to get a Monday to Friday, normal horse racing. Um, he really is a bet you've got to have. OK, yeah, strong words there in favour of the Henry de Bromhead uh, runner. Uh, uh, Vincent, I have a sneaky feeling you're kind of weighing in uh, along the same route. Yes, very much so. The, the thing for me is I told Sir Gerhard, I, Supreme Novice Hurdle was made for this horse. Everything said to me he would win the Supreme. 
Um, obviously, the only question mark was his jumping. He's been a little bit sketchy on his first two runs over hurdles, but I thought they'd have that ironed out and he'd win a Supreme. Obviously, Willie Mullins and his team have come up with a, a different plan. They're splitting the races between um, Dice Heart Dynamo and himself. Dice Heart Dynamo, which a team of other horses run in the Supreme, and then we have him going here over two miles five. This is a late decision, obviously, because he's only he, he's never run beyond two miles over hurdles, is the other thing. Um, it looks like the plan will be, oh, we'll improve his jumping by settling him in behind, and he can go at a slower pace, pop his mm. hurdles lovely, and he's a point-to-point -point winner, he'll stay and he'll win. In theory, that's, yes, there's a chance that will happen, and that's why he's so short a price. But the problem is, in reality, I think he's going to struggle here. The reason he'll struggle is he's a horse who really tanks in his races. Mm. He's pulls pulls hard in all of them he needs to be in front that's when his best form is if you look at all of his form he when he won his Cheltenham bumper he made all he's made all of his two hurdle races one time he didn't make the running was in the punchestown champion bumper last year and got beaten by kilcrook now people would say oh he was over the top at that stage perhaps he was perhaps it was the fact he didn't make the running or he wasn't up with the pace allowed to bowl along as he likes to do so they put a horse in here a maiden in here called hexo and I presume the reason for that is that he'll make the running. Journey with me is also going to be prominent. They'll go quick. This could be a, a real test of stamina. And if he doesn't settle in behind, and at some point Paul Townend goes, oh, God, here we go, and he has to let him go off, hmm. I think he'll use up all his petrol. That's the danger, that he won't come up the hill. As Stephen says, this race is made for Journey with me. You'd like a little bit of softer ground, ideally, to be absolutely sure, because we know he'll stay all day. He definitely will stay beyond this distance. Journey with me has to be there. Each way, it's a fantastic bet. Well, unanimous decision. And, and, and Vincent, you're the first uh, Irish punts I spoke to who's not on Sir Gerhard, so I like that. It's a, <laughs> it's a, a bit of a change from the the Mullins bandwagon. Mm. But yeah, unanimous on the panel uh, in, in regards to Sir Gerhard. I'm quite happy you've both talked that journey with me, uh, gents, because I'd start to lose my confidence in that horse. So yeah, I'm reinvigorated after listening to, uh, to, to yourselves. Right, moving on to the 210 uh, at Cheltenham. The Brown Advisory Novices Chase scores great one action here. Um, over the three miles, a brave man's game uh, heads the market for full Nichols and Harry Cobden team. I've heard a lot of rubbish spoken on the preview nights, in my view, uh, uh, about this horse, about flat trap bully, can't do this, can't do that. Look, you have one run at Cheltenham as a weak novice hurdler where he ran uh, behind an absolute superstar. Since he's got over fences, Stephen, a uh, brave man's game has looked uh, absolutely electric. And I, I think he just wipes the floor with this lot. There we go. There's my piece. Right. You take it away. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't disagree at all. I mean, when he won at Kempton over Christmas, I thought he was an absolute. I, mean, I think we tipped him. I thought he was. I think it was about five to four on or something in the yeah. morning. I thought this is a very. He went off eleven to eight. So yeah. he got the market completely wrong. I know Paul Nichols was struggling at that time and all the rest of it, but he was pretty impressed. I mean, the only negative now is his price. I think, and I'm sort of flipped and gone the other way because wow. I, I think you know he's two to one and Ahoy Senor is six to one. And when they went into Kempton, the other one was favourite. Now Ahoy Senor right-handed has run twice at Carlisle where he didn't jump very well and got rid of his jockey. And at Kempton, he was on the wrong leg and he didn't jump well. And yeah. I don't think it's his game. He needs to go left-handed. Now, um, the other thing about Brave Man's Game, a positive about Brave Man's Game, is Paul Nichols has had nine winners in the last 14 yeah, he's days. Back. Yeah. He's back. I mean, there's no doubt about that. They were probably struggling for at least a month, uh, probably two. Um, but they're definitely back now. He's a lovely horse. Um, it, it, there's cases for and against. All of his wins over fence have been in four runner races. I mean, this isn't going to be a huge field, as we can see. But it's, it's a good race. It's a much more competitive race. Yeah. Um, I would imagine Venetia's will front run. Uh, Ahoy Senor wants to be near the front, so there's not going to be any hiding places. Um, I thought Ahoy Senor at six to one, uh, a bit of rain had helped. He was really impressive at Weatherby. It was a non event of a race, but he jumped brilliantly. Yeah. Uh, and, and Lucinda Russell um, is a yard going really well in the north. They've had five winners in the last 14 days, so they're flying. Uh, one of them's two to one, one of them's six to yeah. one. Um, that, that would dictate which yeah. way I went. I mean, it's the only race of the whole week. Uh, virtually had where English trainers got the front three in the market. <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose yeah, you're absolutely mm. right. Or uh, hoisting you for Scotland, I suppose. Oh, sorry, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, yeah. no you, you are right, it, it, as you say. It's it's unusual to look mm. at a Cheltenham market and see that type of dynamic. Uh, is this one for the home team here, Vincent, or do you think the you know the likes of Capadano, Fury Road, a few of these horses uh, further down the market are going to be having a say in this one? No, I think this is definitely one for the British. I um, think it's a great idea. Stick all your races in the one race. Make sure you don't have a whitewash at Cheltenham. That's, that's the plan. <laughs> um, terrific. Great man's game is, is the obvious one. I'd agree. 
very hard to pick holes in the overall dynamic of him. He's definitely a much better chaser than he was a hurdler. Even his hurdle form was pretty decent anyway with the Bob Ollinger run last year. It's, Bob Ollinger is probably something special anyway. Um, I will see that later in the week. The other thing here is the uh, from an Irish angle, I'm struggling to see anything that will even contend here. The, the best we possibly have is Capadano. Yeah. Capadano was beaten four and three quarter lengths by Bob Ollinger in Punchestown. The thing with that race is, first of all, that was over two and a half. If you'd have stretched that out to three miles, how far would he have been beaten? Probably 25 lengths by the by the finish of it. He, okay, he gave Bob Ollinger a little bit of a fright turning in. There was a lot of fences omitted that day. But as soon as Bob Ollinger got into top gear, it was all over. And it was only a matter of how far in the end. And the further they went, the further he would have won. So I'm not sure Capadano even wants this trip necessarily. Right. Interesting. Then the other thing is there was a lot of fences omitted that day. So, okay, he got around there. He goes the next day. And he doesn't get around he unseats early so going to be a lot of fences here a lot of distance for him to go i i'd be against him i i think he'll end up being too short a price considering he's the only real irish contender so half the punters are going to be back in him and the other half will be spread across the english ones i i certainly think brave man's game to me i know stephen was on about the price being short i don't think it's that short i think he's, he's a fair price at nine to four consider all things considered and the fact that the nichols horses are in right form at the moment and Nichols thinks this is the best he's had, compares him to Denman and all the rest of it. I, I'd be surprised if he if he ends up being nine to four or any bigger than that on the, by the time the race is up. Yeah, fascinating stuff, isn't it? Uh, an absolutely terrific race in prospect, I think it is fair to say. That, moving on to the Coral Cup now, uh, which comes up at 2.50. Uh, one of those uh, equine Rubik's Cube, Stephen, are often Ooh. this contest, isn't it? You, you can uh, you tie your head in knots here. I mean, how do you try to uh, approach a race like this? Do you look for perhaps a couple win only? Do you do you look for an each way angle? Do you sit it out? I mean, where are you right. going with this Wait, assignment? This is, the, this is an absolutely belting handicap. There's some horses here well ahead of the game. There's a few Irish plots. It's got everything. Yeah. I mean... The thing we always say, Ed, I, I quite like to put a package together. If you can get on with a bookmaker, I can use six or more places, back four or five of them each way. The terms are fantastic in your favour. We used to run a, when I used to work in a trading room, we used to run the place book. And if you offer six places, you've got to get to 600% basically in the place market. And it gets to about 520%. It's right, yeah. mild. You've got no chance. No the more chance, you yeah, take, yeah. the more you lose as a bookmaker on these races with extra places. So you've got to find a package. The two I liked. Um, unexpected party. Dan Skelton's got a really good record, Cheltenham Handicaps. He's gone up £12 for Ascot, which will put people off. But, I mean, to be honest, he won with three stone in hand. He's a very smooth traveller, won't mind any rain. And he's only had six runs over hurdles. And uh, here's one I think you'll like, Ed. And mm. I can't, I'm can't. i stealing this from somebody who is a very, very shrewd punter who's backed this horse each way, uh, McFabulous. Mm. Now, yeah. I don't think he really gets three miles. He certainly weakened out of things last time. But he's a graded horse in a handicap. He's a smooth traveller. They'll drop him out cold out the back of the telly. Um, they always go for home miles too soon in these huge field races. And I can see him gliding into things late, running on strongly from out the back. And, of course, we've just been saying Paul Nichols is now flying. Uh, and they, yeah. they, he wasn't really when McFabulous was last seen out. So uh, I think he's an interesting one around about 20 to 1 as well. Yeah, indeed. The uh, cheap piece has gone that runner for the mm. first time. I think that the Nichols cap would definitely be very much in the, the no rain please brigade for, for that horse. Uh, definitely one with a lot of spring ground form. But yeah, interesting uh, thoughts here. Uh, Vincent, yourself, is this a race you like to try and unpick? Oh, I love these. Yeah, I can't get, can't get a, a more difficult handicap. That's my favourite thing. Exactly. Just trying to go through them. Now, having said that, we've got a little bit of a, a dilemma here there's 26 runners and there's two reserves and at the moment the sam thomas horse good risk at all mm. is one of the favorites and he's first reserve so far no non-runners so i'm not sure if he gets in that, yeah. that changes the dynamic considerably i suppose mm. when you start looking at it that way we've so many irish contenders here and lots of them with chances and um, the the normal place to start in one of these races for me is jp mcmanus because his horses they, they, they're given quiet runs throughout the year. And then when the big days come, these big handicaps, he normally has half a dozen or more in them. And you really have to take note of all of his. He's mm. got several contenders in here, and I wouldn't put anyone off any of them. The likes of Drop the Anchor and Comprand. But for me, there's a couple of outsiders, two Irish ones. I think they'll run well at big prices. One of them is May's runner, Woody Mullins's. Didn't run mm. too bad the last day. And a horse who finished in front of him the last day is Mars Harper of yeah. Gordon Elliott's. I, I could see the two. I think they're wrong, wrongly priced at the minute. They're both bigger than 20 to 1. You could end up getting 33 to 1 by the time the race is off with these if there's no major money for them. And each way, as Stephen usually says about the extra places, definitely value here. I think the two of them will run well. 
Yeah, fascinating you say that. I'm actually quite keen on Capron, providing that the rains don't really arrive. And obviously, Mars Harper uh, followed home Capron uh, oh. earlier on in the season, didn't he? Uh, looking at others in here, you're quite right saying that time of recording, we don't actually know if the favourite runs or not because he's mm. first reserve, uh, as such is the, the way of the world. Uh, the Shunter is also a uh, Vincent. I'll just come back to you on, on, on quickly. Uh, also, of course, he's uh, provided connections with, with lots of fun over the years. Oh, without a doubt, landed a huge gamble here last year. Jordan Gainford rode him seven to two. He went off, I think it was last year. Um, very good horse. He's switching from chases back to hurdles. Yes, you couldn't rule him out. But there's so many in here you can't rule out. The other one then is um, Talisian of Gordon Elliott's, the horse that was going for the champion hurdle, which is astonishing. Really, like came came over from France. It couldn't run as a novice in Ireland that had won a, it had won before the season started in France. Yeah. So he had to go into um, higher grade races. That definitely has a chance, but you, you just query the fact it hasn't shown a whole lot in Ireland since it's come. It, it, it won its maiden, or won, won a race and then was uh, second the last day, well beaten in small fields. Interesting horse. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting horse, mm. St. Felicien. And uh, earlier on, uh, we caught up with his jockey, Robbie Power, to discuss his thoughts on his mountain, the Coral Cup. Yeah, the Coral Cup, talk about plans, 26 runners. Um, it's not straightforward. He's a horse that has very little experience as well. He's only had the two starts in Ireland, one in France, and three in total, So, and in small fields. So it's going to be a big culture shock for San Felicia when he lines up with 25 others. Um, it'll be all about trying to find a, a space, a little bit of space to give him a, a chance to, to get his eye in and get jumping. If if he handles the hustle and bustle of the Coral Cup, I think he's got a massive chance. Um, he's a horse that we hold in very high regard. And if... Um, if things work out from the Carl Cup, I think you think it'll be beaten. Well, interested to hear Robbie's thoughts there. Uh, yeah, it could be a, a bit of a baptism of fire, but um, there is a, a chance off 149. He is well handicapped. So, uh, yeah, just to, to sum up, gentlemen, in what is a credibly wide open affair, if I could nail your colours to the mask for a selection each. Uh, Stephen, go back to you. Yeah, unexpected party for me, but I, I do think I'll have McFabulous uh, each way as well. Absolutely. I've given you two. I guess fair. That is fair in a race of this nature. And um, Vincent, yourself? Well, I'll, I'll go with Mars Harper. Mars Harper is the main bet and a small each way on Mays Runner, who was a little bit behind on the last day, but I think the two of them will run well. Yeah, interesting. I, I, I like that come from Mars Harper form, so that's going to be my two selections. Um, I'm, I'm with both of those. I think they'll run well. And an each way price. Right, moving on to the big one. Uh, 3.30, uh, the champion chase, the Queen Mother champion chase. And to me, this is the race of the week, if not the season. Uh, this is absolutely spellbinding stuff in here. We've got the rematch of the Clarence House chase, Shishkin and an Ergami lock horns again. We've got a seemingly rejuvenated Shaq and Paul Soir, Nube Negra. I mean, we've got previous Chowton Festival winners here, the likes of Politolog, Envoy Allen, put the kettle on train at huge prices. Can't get a look in, Stephen. I mean, this is a who's who of Hall of Famers, isn't it? It's a brilliant race, isn't it? Britain against Ireland. It's got everything, this race. The only thing is that it's a, it's a mismatch, isn't it? The favourite is an absolute <laughs> certainty. <laughs> He's gone to a fair game. price. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know me, Nico de Boinville, five to four on it. It's just, I'll start shaking at the prospect of it. But, I mean... He's got to, he'll have to do something dramatically wrong or the horse will have to fall not to win for me. I, he's got a brilliant race makeup. I mean, when he beat Energamain at Ascot, we've done this before, but he was parked in the car park. He made a blunder at the wrong time. Um, he still got up to win. The stiff uphill finish at Cheltenham will suit. There'll be no soft lead for Energamain here. There definitely won't be. There There could be three or four front runners. I mean, Finn and Bill Savola um, will probably try and lead. Uh, Shakin might lit, try and lead, and Nugamin's going to lead. It's a little it's a hot problem. Race. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. has done in the past. I mean, he yeah. put the kettle on used to, but yeah, yeah, that yeah, one's yeah, too yeah. slow now. I mean, that's a million as well. There's not many runners. I I, I don't fancy Nugamin on the makeup of the race, and I think Shishkin, who's seven out of seven, um, he's got everything in his favour. A little bit of rain would help. I suspect, you know, he does hit a bit of a flat spot. He takes a bit of driving and then he just flies up the hill. I mean, he's got to a really, really backable price now. I mean, I listened, we listened to Danny Mullins, didn't we, the other day. There was a million, there's a million excuses for Shaq and Paul Soir. They think he's not for me. I mean, you've got to let your eyes do the, the you know, guide you with these things. He, he went to Sandown and he stopped as though he'd been shot. And in this race last year, he travelled round up the inside. It was a very weak renewal of the race. This is a very strong one. Um, and, and he stopped again up the hill, having had the perfect sit, jumped superbly. 
I couldn't dream him. He's he's ten years old now. I know Vincent's keen. We're going to disagree. I probably I won't be coming on if he hoses up. But <laughs> I think Shishkin is one of the better bets of the week, and he's gone to a really fair price now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, almost even money, isn't is he? Really unthinkable. I thought he'd be a bit shorter. But anyway, Vincent, the floor is yours. Yeah, the first thing is Nicky Henderson. He got some flack early season over this horse, didn't he? Over Shishkin, don't run him here, don't run him there, all that sort of stuff. The bottom line is, if you own Shishkin. Nicky Henderson's done some job for you, hasn't he? Mm. Here he comes, comes back in, still unbeaten over fences and all the rest, and then he comes and odds on favoured or close to even money with a huge chance again. I think it's fantastic. I think Nicky Henderson deserves full credit for everything he's done with the horse, and all people do is give out to him about, okay, he, it's it's a link to a bookmaker, perhaps, as part of the reason that he comes out with a lot of these press releases and everything else around his horses, but... He definitely cares about his horses and he gets them here in tip-top shape for the big day, which is all you really want if you're an owner of the likes of Joe Donnelly. Mm. This is a fantastic race. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. In so many ways. Like you've got you've got the last two winners of the race, and yet they've yeah. no chance. <laughs> you, you've got you've got what was supposed to be the, the second coming um in in Ireland a couple of years ago when Gordon Elliott had Envoy Allen. Is he the forgotten horse? Is he the forgotten oh, horse? If it's after a wind off, I mean, he's a huge price. I mean, twenty-eight to one or there. Right? Astonishing price, but like we thought, he was going to be a Gold Cup winner. Here he is running the Champion Chase. What's that all about? I, four, I don't know. Four, four to nine to win at the festival last year, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. Incredible, yeah. Really. yeah. You're, you're talking 25 to one, maybe 33 to one here. It, it is astonishing, but that, that's the quality of this race. Isn't it? Shishkin, mm. yes, obviously, major contender in every way, but I, I still have a feeling Energamine has to have a go at this again. Um, we, we've talked about this on previous shows. Okay, it's it's nearly a furlong shorter. And in any man's book, whatever way you look at that race in Sandown, you stop it anywhere bar the last 100 yards, and there is only one winner. Like, how short was an ergamine trading coming over the last in, in Sandown the last day? Like, very, very short odds. You move, the, you move the race back a furlong here. It's very hard. To, I, I can't see. He's a Willie Mullins horse. They taught the world of him from the beginning. He had a slight setback recently with a stone bruise, but that, that was only a day or two. He's back over that. He schooled yeah. in Navin a couple of weeks ago over three fences. Everything's fine. He's 100%. Paul Townend riding him. He can't be far away is the first thing. And then we haven't even spoken about their other horse, Shaq and Poor Swat. <laughs> He's a machine on his day. There's no doubting that. You, you, you look at what he did in Punchestown last year. Okay, we know he's gone to the UK. He's flopped twice. But when you see what he's done on home soil in Ireland, he is a serious, serious horse. Not just an averagely good horse, he's seriously good. He's top level. And he's 10 years of age now, but if they have him right, and they possibly have, they're changing tactics here. They found, they think they found the reason for his two flops in the UK was the fact that he uses up too much energy, he gets all excited when he's traveling um, on the boat over, and he's basically left his race there twice. So what they've done is they've done a different preparation with him. They put a bit more weight on him to allow him to get through that and come here primed. If they're right, he's a serious contender too. Mm. Patrick Mullins on him, well capable of winning on one of these sort of horses. This is this is some race. And well, how are they going to ride him, Vincent? How how are they going to ride him? Because Anugamine definitely wants to front, and so does Shakin, and obviously they're the same yard. Yeah, is, it, yeah. is someone yeah. one of them going to take a pull and drop out the back? And it, I mean, it, I would say if if there was to be one to do that, it has to be Shaq and Perswell. Well. Yeah, yeah, I would have thought with Patrick on it as well. Like he love hunting one of these around. We, we've seen him. He did it. He did it before with Asterian Falange in Leopardstown one day when the horse couldn't jump, and he was able to nurse and baby him over mm -hmm. fences and still come with a with a rattle at the last. I, I'd expect him to possibly drop out completely here and yeah. just play his cards late. They've got they've got two chances. They've the one in front of everything. If if an Ergamine yeah. goes off in front, pings every fence, he's going to be very hard to peg back. And then Shaq and Poor Swat coming home like a train is what I'm imagining. So I think yeah. it's going to be a great race. Fascinating. Oh, I mean, it'll be, it's going to be an amazing betting race as well because Tony Bloom owns uh, an Ergamine. Yeah. And I know he had a, you know, a, 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 telef a Cheltenham telephone number on him at Ascot. And they were mortified he got beat at Ascot. Yeah. Absolutely mortified. They thought it was a certainty. And that's the... the so Vincent's right. He's held in high regard. I just think it's the makeup of the race. It's going to be a contested pace. And Shishkin did a lot of ground jumping left at Ascot this mm. way round. This is his track. 
It, mm. It's going to fall perfectly for him. He'll storm past them up the hill and everyone will be saying, how on earth was he 11 or 10 on? Well, I suppose that's the other argument, isn't it? Shishkin's got the uh, the Channel Festival winning form in yeah. the book already, uh, I suppose. So at least he ticks that uh, criteria. Uh, just go back to the pace angle. This is going to be run at a frenetic gallop, one with a shoe. But I do think the forgotten horse in here will be Nube Negra. He'll mm. be ridden very cold at the back. If they yep. do go a million miles an hour... I think he'll be the type to just come pounce late and try and pick them off. I, I don't think he'll win. I think Shishkin will win. But yeah. I, would be, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Nube Negra uh, yeah. was the horse to follow home uh, Shishkin. He has an unbelievable record fresh as yeah. well, Nube Negra. Uh, four figures of one one two one on the back of a three-month break or more. So clearly uh, the Dan Scout ploy, which he used with quite a few of his horses this year, of, of bubble wrapping them, uh, is something that has definitely worked for him in the past. Anyway, we're split on the panel here. Shishkin versus Anergamine, part two. The whole host, the Hall of Famers in there as well. Uh, the the Chappie Chase, uh, undoubtedly in my view, anyway, is the race of the week. What an absolute cracker. Right, uh, for something of a totally different dynamic, uh, the 410, of course, is the Glen Farkas uh, cross-country chase. And, of course, this could have um, headlines for totally different reasons as well, in the sense that Tiger Roll, if we believe what we're told, this is his final appearance on a race course, Vincent, where he goes in search of his, um, unbelievably, his sixth Chowton Festival win. Well, he's been a fantastic horse, hasn't he? Uh, unreal when you think when you think about it. There was a documentary done there recently, a, well, a podcast documentary by RTE went through his whole career and all the different things around, and it's fascinating. Fascinating career he's had to win two Grand Nationals is astonishing. Never mind going for his sixth win at Cheltenham, which is which is also unbelievable. Um, uh, I find it difficult here to to say. Would you back Tiger Roll here? I I I wouldn't personally, but then again. How wrong I was last year. I thought he'd no chance coming into this race last yeah. year. I think we all did, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pulled up in Navin, looked terrible. And people were people were saying, Oh no, he didn't run that bad in Navin. What? Mm. I, I watched that race many times. I couldn't mm. see the even a semblance yeah, of mm. any um spark left in him. I thought he was gone, and yet he hacked up here, posed up in it. Yeah. yeah. Seemingly he's in unbelievable form at home. So yeah. what's he going to do this year? He's he probably is a certainty, but it's not a race I'd normally have a bet in for all sorts of reasons, particularly mm -hmm. the obstacles. Yeah. The the other one here, there's there's an interesting horse in here. Is the horse that beat him here a couple of years ago, Easy Land, mm -hmm. uh, was trained in France, owned by J.P. McMahon. What I find bizarre here is they changed the horse from France, and where did they put him? To John Joe O'Neill. Why there? Rather than you, you look at these races, you look at the look at the runners in it. All the McManus horses for these cross country races are with Enda Budger. Enda mm -hmm. Budger is a past master with these banks and hedges and all the yep. rest of it. Why didn't he go there? And I'm just thinking maybe it's like the Shack and Pursois. Maybe he's a bad traveller. Maybe that's something to do with it. And they decide, look, let's stick him right beside Shelton, yeah, where yeah, he, yeah. he can Climb walk to the track it. almost. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe maybe that's part of it. No, he's had, he's, had, he's pulled up a couple of times um, recently. You can you can ignore that. This is a different kettle of fish. I wouldn't be surprised to see him run very well. There's obviously been a plan of some description with him, and he could be the one to 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 give Tiger Roll a run for his money. But for me, it's a race I'll stay out of and hope Tiger Roll wins, and I'll stand up and cheer like everybody else. Absolutely, I'll let you have your go and get your diet lemonade and your cheese sandwich while that's going on. Uh, but no, it will be will be brilliant, Vincent. Uh, Stephen, you, you can actually have a four course lunch while that's on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, you could do, could you? Yeah, uh, Stephen, coming to you on, on on this race, you just break down the facts of it. You've got a twelve year old here at the festival, six to four. Now, to me, that just mm. makes me sit uneasy from a betting perspective. But nonetheless. When you you know we we all I think guilty on this show last year we we could not have Tiger Roll yeah. for love nor money and he, I mean he won with, uh, as you would say with three stone in hand. It is, how, yeah, it how, is. how are you with him this year? Um, uh, well, I think you'd be obliged to stand him again. I mean, I laid I laid him last year a place. Uh, I think you know seven to four. Great he bet. has got you know pay pay as I, as I shouted through the. Uh, the letterbox to the bank manager. I had the value, you know, as the bailiffs <laughs> arrived. But uh, no, I mean, I, he was a transformed last year, and he'd have to be transformed again. Apparently, he's working well, but he's certainly priced up. I mean, last year uh, he wasn't a short price, was he? I think he he was nine to two last year, and Easy mm. Island was evens, and it, he just cruised around. He'd won the race after about four jumps. It was, the, it was the most extraordinary race I've ever seen. I mean, I bookmaker friends of mine always say these cross country races they go round and round and round until the favourite hits the front, and then they stop. Um, because they're not terribly competitive, but they, they are um, something different, aren't they? They're not for me as a betting race. As I say, I'm still paying out from last year. I mean, I agree with Vincent really. Easyland is the interesting runner. 
But again, a bit like Tiger Roll, you watch his runs. He's been 66 and 50. Now, it might not matter, but he's been beaten after a mile. So it's going to be, I know these fences are a bit different. It's going to be yeah. some transformation. I mean, he was sort of seven to four favourite three months ago. He's now 10, mm. which is probably understandable. He's an interesting market horse, Easy Land. He could be eight to one. There might be a few quid for him. He could be 25. I, I suspect he might be the latter, to be honest. I think they might not fancy him and the whole world will be on Tiger Roll again. But not really a betting race for me. I, Still licking my wounds from last year, Ed, to be honest. No, absolutely. It, it's, it's a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? Obviously, Easy Land won this a couple of years ago by 17 lengths, uh, yeah. beating Tiger Roll. But I've noticed with Easy Land, a lot of his form has come on deep ground. So I do think uh, if we do get the upper end of the, uh, the, the, the precipitation, shall we say, I think connections will be pleased uh, by and large. Uh, moving on to the 450. Uh, another very straightforward race to try and sort out, of course. This cool. is the Johnny Henderson Grand Annual Challenge uh, here. Um, Vincent, you can kick off. Uh, how, how are you approaching this one? By having no bet. That's how oh, I approach this come one. Come on, let's get you off <laughs> this, the, get is, you this, off is the very, this is very difficult. Yeah. Look, we, we've got a day where we've got five shortish price favourites. You can either take them on um, or or stick with them. Go, go, with the, go with the short ones. This is a race I wouldn't be including in any of that. Um, JP McManus again has two likely contenders here. He's got Andy Dufresne from Gordon mm -hmm. Elliott's, definitely an interesting horse with Mark Walsh on it, and then Away with the Sea, which won the last day. Shane Fitzgerald came claiming five off that yeah. for Joseph O'Brien. I wouldn't, I, I don't really fancy either of them to win it, to be honest. Which I have a little bit of a tip here for one of the English horses, the Tizard horse, Amarillo Sky. Mm -hmm. I know that um, young Brendan Powell fancies this, he's told a few at home, uh, over here, including his father. That's he thinks it's his best of the week. Yes, it definitely has a chance, I'm sure, but this is wide open. Um, another one then that I know you were talking about previously is Buddy Rich. Ed. Mm. Could be well handicapped too. A very interesting horse, Davy Russell riding that as yeah. well. This, this is very competitive. Yes, have if you want to have a little bet, go something small each way. But for me, maybe Amarillo Sky. I don't know a whole lot about it, bar the fact that I do know it's fancy. Yeah, powder dry for Vincent in the Grand Annual. Stephen? I think I think this is a good race to have a bet in. I must admit, there's 20 runners um, at the moment. Again, extra places, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, there's lots of front runners here. Ed. They are going to go ridiculously mm. fast. There's, of course, called Four Pleasure in the race, mm. who is always 10 yeah. lengths clear. He's 10 lengths clear. If he ran in the Champion Chase, he'd be 10 lengths clear. He's an absolute lunatic. You've got Gumball in there, Global Citizen. They all only know mm. one way. And there's uh, uh, Amarillo Sky. Vincent's bet was so impressive at Newbury. And he got harried on the lead at Newbury and he stormed clear. But he's going to try and front run as well. There's loads of... Edit, on editor there. de Geet. Yeah, no, the, the biggest yeah. one of the lot. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I've missed him out. Yeah, it's so there's, there's, there's a load on. There's, a there's load no on. Yeah. way in yeah. the world that any of them can last home, in my opinion. And from an each way point of view, there's going to be a massive pace collapse here. So who have you got? You've got that lovely old rogue, Sky Pirate, who mm. won the race last year. Brilliant record at Cheltenham. Yeah. Nick Schofield riding him like a non trier for Alan Jones. Out the back, on the bridle cruising around up the inside any luck in running he'll come there cantering at the last and probably then dog it and weaken out of things up the hill but he's a good each way bet 12 to 1 find the extra places i think he's barring a fall he's bound to go really close yeah interesting you should say that yeah only four pound higher than last year clearly been targeted at this race so vincent mentioned buddy rich i think this race with the pace Looks just set up for a perfect uh, stalking Davy Russell ride here uh, on the Gordon Elliott runner. Uh, shuffling on quickly uh, to the finale on the card, uh, the champion bumper. Uh, if we could keep this one brief, Jed, Stephen, uh, come to you first. You getting involved? Uh, loads of reputations, Ed. Um, for me, I'm going to be a bookmaker. I'm going to put the front two in. They've shortened up even further. We were talking about it earlier. Uh, in in the previous show that it was about three on the front two well now it's near it's nearer seven to two four on the front two for looking mm. on the exchanges so for me they both got huge reputations but you can't help but lay them as a bookmaker yeah in, indeed loads of uh, unknown quantities as you would expect nonetheless uh, vincent uh, some very high class unknown quantities on display oh this this could be a vintage renewal of this race we seem to have some exceptional bumper horses in Ireland at the moment i know we've always had exceptional bumper mm. horses but we have a big group of them now mainly with Willie Mullins, but obviously there's American Mike as well. Um, for Seal Vega, very short price. It's very hard to say, can you go and back a horse at six to four for a race like this, a 22 runner bumper? You have 10 unbeaten horses in here, so we don't know Amazing. what they are. Yeah. On top of that, one thing that's very significant here, when you start looking at how do you how do you evaluate the form? We have 22 runners and only two of them are run against each other at any point, mm. which is 
um, Fasil Vega and Joyu Mash Mashin of um, Paul Nolans. They're the only two, the only one piece of collateral form we have is those two. That's it. The rest of them, we're, we're guessing. And it's pin in the air stuff of how good some of these are. For me, I fancy a horse based on two things. One of them is a horse called James's Gate. I fancy this for one reason is he started two to five to win a bumper in Ireland um, back a, a month or so ago at Punchestown. Back from 11 to eight to two to five. That is seriously significant in an Irish bumper. This horse was obviously showing unbelievable things at home and he hacked up. And since then, I've heard two or three different interviews with Patrick Mullins about this particular race and what he'd ride and Redemption Day and Thalcia Vega and not a lot between them and everything else. And every time he talks about them, he mentions James's Gate. Mm. This James's Gate isn't that far behind them. Yeah. You're talking decent double figure odds. I wouldn't be surprised in an in an open race like this. Anything can happen. I wouldn't be surprised to see him certainly run into a place, possibly even win. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it really will conclude uh, what should be an epic day of action, uh, Ladies' Day at Cheltenham on the Wednesday. Right, to get your best bets for the day, and gentlemen, uh, Vincent, you can continue. Uh, let's, ha let's have uh, your best three for Wednesday, please. OK, the best three for me are Journey With Me, definite each way play in the opening race. Energamine, possibly a smaller bet um, to have a chance of beating Shishkin, definitely a cracking race. And worth having a bet anyway just for the fun of it in that and then in the in the bumper james's gate each way for me right some great value picks there from vincent and steven yourself um well shishkin is, is the betting expert naped i think he's got to around even money that is maximum stakes for me sky pirate each way in the grand annual extra places and maybe you could even put him in a double with journey for me who is one of the best each way bets of the week i think there's not many runners in that race definitely stay start praying for rain all day Mm, absolutely yeah yeah keep your eyes on the weather uh for what it's worth i'm going to throw in i i, I think brave man's game's just going to jump the rivals ragged here i think he's electric i really hope he wins uh compromed uh in the coral cup uh horse who's been laid out for this uh off a mark of 140 cheltenham form ticks a lot of the right boxes just wouldn't want to see too much rain for the philip hobbs runner there uh, and then in the grand annual i just think uh, yeah davy russell rides uh cheltenham as well Pretty much any jockey has done, he will be creeping into contention. Uh, the goggles will be down when they're covered in mud uh, by the time the grand annual uh, comes there. As he, as he takes a pull and looks around, uh, jumping the last. Well, that's the that's the plan anyway. But um, no, thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for joining me. Thank you for watching at home. And of course, I don't forget to check out uh, all Stephen's tips on bettingexpert.com and all the latest news and features and anything uh, Chartland Festival related on irishracing.com. We'll do it all again tomorrow. <laughs>